Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to install this dual Z axis belt synchronizer on a CR Tennis Pro V2. But guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. Alright man, let's get into it. I came across this interesting video on YouTube, but the person that made it didn't give any details at all. They didn't even speak in the video. Uh, but thankfully they did include a link in the video description to the STL files for this belt synchronizer. And I downloaded it. It looked really good except for the belt tension, which was kind of lousy. But let me show you that. And, uh, and, and what those components look like. So the belt tensioner that uh, was included in that STL download uh, was really not, not, not good. It wasn't uh, aligned properly. So what I did is I jumped on the on shape and I, I recreated it uh, with uh, some modifications. and also added a little notch here in the center so that you can easily center it to the crossbar on the A-frame of the gantry. So let's jump back over to the printer and we'll assemble this thing. All right, guys, so before we start taking it apart in the back, I need to mark off the center. So what I got here is just a metric tape measure. And this aluminum extrusion is uh, 400 millimeters across. Uh, so we need uh, 200 millimeters would be the, sec the center. So this is, a, this is in centimeters, so it would be 20 centimeters. That would be our middle. So I'm just uh, holding this thing up here if I can. And once I got it, I just hold it on my two fingers and I just mark it with a pencil. Alright, so that's our center point. Alright guys, so here are a few of the parts that we're going to need. Uh, now these are the 3D printed parts and I'll include the STL files to, to this. Uh, this, I didn't create these two parts. Uh, these I found online. Uh, they came with a uh, another part that was kind of like a tensioner for the for the timing belt. But uh, this, this tensioner had the, uh, the bearing in the wrong position. So what I did is I, I jumped on the on shape and I, I made the part the way it's supposed to be. I also created a couple of uh, bearing caps, so these are going to shore up this space in this roller skate bearing. So now this is the list of parts that we're going to need, and again, I'll put all the links in the video description, that way you guys don't have to hunt around for it. Uh, you're going to need two M4 by 8 millimeter screws, two M4T slot nuts, two GT2 belt pulleys and this is uh the ones that have an eight millimeter bore six millimeters wide 20 teeth also going to need two idler pulleys also six millimeter wide uh, now these have to have a three millimeter bore uh, the one roller skate bearing four washers uh, with three millimeter openings seven millimeters in diameter three M3 by 16 millimeter screws, and then finally one 784 tooth GT2 belt, also six millimeter wide. So let's start by putting some of these uh, parts together, and then we'll take apart the uh, bearings on the printer. So all we need here is uh, so to put these on. We're just going to take the, the bearing, put the two little caps on it. And we're also going to need a couple of washers here. 
So we're going to need one washer on top. And then our 16 millimeter long screw. And just screw that through the two end caps till it comes out the other side. So just like that. And we're going to take the other nut, I'm sorry, the other washer, and drop it on top. And then we're going to screw that to the underside of this, uh, this little arm here. So I went ahead and tapped the plastic with a, uh, with a tap. But you could also just drive a, drive a screw in there and that will also work. All right, so that one's ready to go. that one off here to the side and then on on these uh, we're going to put the idler pulleys on there so again these are also going to need a uh, washer on the bottom so we're just going to put the washer down here and the the reason for the washer is once we start tightening this up we don't want it to to create a lot of friction with the plastic so that's what the washer is for to step it up a little bit And then again, just like before, just thread these in. And once you get them in as far as you can by hand, then use the Allen key. But you don't want to over tighten these. Uh, you want it to you want it to spin freely like that, but not have too much slop. So I'm just going to tighten it a little bit more, and it'll eventually get to a point to where you you. You tighten it so much that it won't spin, but then what you got to do is just back it back it up a little. See, like right there, it's it's hard to hard to spin. So I'm just gonna back it up a little. So it spins freely. That's good right there. And we'll grab the next one. Do the same thing. tight just back it up a little till it rolls actually I think I got this one's too tight because I don't hear it oh, that one's working good yeah, that's good perfect all right so let's uh let's flip this pr printer around and we'll take it apart oh, one thing I forgot let's go ahead and, and put these these on here now too I'm just gonna Take these, put these M4 by eight millimeter screws in there, and then start the T nuts. All right, so now these are ready to go. Just put that off to the side. And uh, all we're gonna do now is remove these two screws from here. And let's see if I can remember the size these screws are. Okay. Let me just pack these things out. And to get this off, just pull the Z lead screw back a little bit just to give yourself enough clearance to pull this thing off. And watch the two screws because they'll fall out like they just did. And we need we need to save these, so just put these off to the side. And now let's do this other one. And same as before, just pull the lead screw back gently. 
You don't want to bend it too much. And then take out the part. All right, then we can leave the, the, the T-nuts in there for now. And let's jump back on the bench and assemble these, uh, these upper timing pulleys. All right, so let's start by taking these apart. And we got to get these bearings that are in here out of here. So just get your Allen key. And... Take these, these screws out. And the part that we're after is this bearing in here. So if you notice this bearing is inside of this uh, inside of this space and then it can move up and down a little bit. So these new uh, brackets are going to be able to mimic the same performance as this. So they got this oval cut out that allows the same movement. So that's what I liked about this kit is as soon as I saw it, I said, yeah, this is, this is the right one to have. So when you, when you drop the part in there, yeah, you can see it. You can see that it has the same, the same little bit of movement in there. That's perfect right there. And just do the same with the other one. All right, let's go back to the printer and we'll install it. And the reason you want to install this is because the, the issue with these dual lead screw machines is that, the, at least with Creality, their motherboards, they only have one driver, which means that two stepper motors are connected to one driver. And what happens is there's variations, slight variations in the motion of these stepper motors. So what happens is, over time, they can get unsynchronized. Also, when you power down the printer, uh, unless you're using uh, anti-backlash uh, nuts, uh, you'll get one side may sag more than the other, and then that will affect your, your upcoming print. Now, what you can do to overcome this is, every time you turn your printer on, you can go ahead and check the level between your two, your two sides. Uh, but if you do a lot of printing, that's that's a lot of extra work that I think that we can eliminate by uh, adding this this upgrade. All right, so all I'm doing now is I'm just looking down the uh, straighten out this this T nut. So I'm turning the T nuts so that when I screw this thing in, it's already it's already turned because sometimes they don't want to turn, and I don't want to futz with this if I don't have to. So I'm just uh, Looking down the opening to make sure that I'm more or less lined up with them. Yeah, it looks like I am. So now I'm just going to put this thing down on here. And then you're going to use the same original screws that you took out of the uh, original bearings that came on this. Came with the sprinter. So don't don't tighten it just yet. Just uh, loosen it, loosen it a little bit so this thing can move back and forth. We got to drop this bearing down in here. So just get the bearing, just drop it down on top of that lead screw. You may have to uh, play with it a little bit to get it to go down, but it'll, it'll go down. And you want to make sure that this lead screw, um, you're not you're not bending it to one side or the other. Just kind of let it settle in the position that it wants to be in and then go ahead and tighten down these these uh, screws Next thing you want to do is get the little timing gear. And uh, this thing is going to have a couple of grub screws. So just make sure that you can see through there and the grub screws are not sticking down into that bore. 
and then you're just going to drop this right on top of the uh, lead screw and the cool thing is that the person that designed this designed it with some holes in here so if you can see I don't know if you can see that on camera yeah you can see that on camera you can see how that allen key goes through that hole so that's how you're gonna that's how you're gonna tighten this so just put it down in the uh, put it down on top of that lead screw and then it's gonna hit the bearing underneath and that's what stops it and then just put the allen key in and, and tighten up the one grub screw and what we'll do is we'll move these together once we get the uh, the other side installed we'll roll it up to tighten the other grub screw but we got one tightened for now now let's jump over to the other side and we'll uh, we'll get that one on there Same thing as before, I'm just going to turn these T-nuts in the uh, V-rail so that they're already in their locked position. Just gonna look down down the hole to see if I can see both the nuts and this one has to come over to the right a little bit. That's about it right there. Alright. Okay. If the screw doesn't want to go in, you may have to um, drill this out a little bit. I had I had my other one, I had to drill it a bit. That'll make it easier to tighten this uh, this screw. So all I'm doing is just I got a I can't remember what size is drill bit. I think it's a one eighth inch drill bit. And then I'm just gonna. No, it looks bigger than one eighth. Let's see what size this is. I can't tell what size it is. Anyway, it's uh it's one that's just slightly bigger than than the hole in the plastic. You just don't want to make it too big. Watch out when you're drilling plastic, you don't want to overheat it. All right, let's try that again. All right, same as before, don't, don't tighten the screws down, just leave them loose. And then get your, get your other bearing and just drop it down. And make sure it goes, it goes in the bore. And then just drop your pulley on there, your timing gear, and then tighten the tighten the one grub screw. All right. Now together, you're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna grab both the. Uh, I'm gonna turn both the lead screws so that I can get at the other uh, the other grub screws. So I'm turning them together to the right.
as you got them lined up, tighten down the grub screw. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, just tight enough that you know it's biting onto that uh, lead screw. Next thing you want to do is take the the tensioner arm, and we're going to install it uh, right here on the top. And then we'll center it in a minute. That's the reason that we made that mark on the other side. But for now, we're going to leave it totally loose. Let's uh, let's check to make sure that we're level on both sides. Before before tightening up that timing belt because then after we do that it's going to be more more of a process to uh, to fix it. So what we want to do here is <clears throat> I got a couple of blocks that I printed up and I'll include these in the in the video description uh, along with the STL files of the other things and these are the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, the lead screws to move the gantry up. I'm trying to do it evenly on both sides, and I'm going to slip these blocks under here. So we got one on one side, and you may have to uh, push the belt up to get it out of the way, because sometimes the uh, the little uh, gantry belt gets in the way of these blocks. And once you got it under there, then go ahead and run the lead screws down to uh, pin those blocks in there. Two blocks are pinned. All right, now we can go back to the top and then uh, put the tension on this on this belt. <clears throat> Take your timing belt. And get it over the, uh, it's, I find it easiest to get it over the the, the timing gear and make sure that this is underneath the bearing that way you have the most amount of slack um, and then take the uh, the other side and work it over this uh, this this pulley and that's it once you have it like this you're good to go uh, next thing we're going to do is get the belt and put it underneath the uh, front of the the tensioner arm and now we're going to turn the printer around and then uh, tighten up this cape or tighten up this belt all right so now i'm just putting the the, the little tensioner arm behind the belt and then this uh, part I, I put a notch in it so you uh, you can easily align it with the mark that you made on the uh, on the crossbar Check our blocks down here, make sure our blocks are, still have tension. Yep, they do. Okay. And now we're going to push the, the tension up against the belt. And you want to, and, and it needs to be flush. So what we're doing is, it's flush with the rail right now. So I'll show you, uh, I'll give you a different shot so you can see how it how, how. Just tighten down these T-nuts. Uh, let me flip it around so I can show you. Let me get you guys in close. You can see what's going on here. So if you look at it from, from overhead, it's it's even with this uh bring this line up that you guys can see better. It's even with the uh, the edge of the rail. Okay. So there's the pencil mark and there's the uh A little mark on my part. Am I straight? Yeah, it looks like I'm pretty straight. All right, so that's what it looks like when it's uh, when it's all installed. I know it looks a little bit confusing, but anyway, that's.
that's that's a shot of it. So let, let's get the the little blocks off, and then we'll home the printer and check and see and make sure everything's working. And we'll home the printer. All right, so now once once you do something like this, a change like this, you need to uh, redo your tramming and you need to redo your bed mesh. Uh, so I'll just do the tramming real quick. I'm not going to go through the bed mesh because that's going to take a little bit of time to do. But we'll uh, go ahead and do the tramming. You're also going to have to reset your Z offset because we messed with the, uh, the gantry. guys if you're new to the channel consider subscribing turn on your notification bell and leave some comments i love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as i see them all right guys this video is a wrap until next time take care